Hello everybody. Since we have completed F1 Business and Technology, now we will be moving on to F2 and F3. So this is the video which is the chapter 1 of F3. So what is F3? F3 is financial accounting. So you can uh, do management accounting and financial accounting side by side. You won't get confused. So I'll be making the videos of F2 and F3 now simultaneously and I'll be making separate playlists for the same and the links of all the playlists will be given in the description box below and in case you haven't done F1 make sure that you do that as well. So we'll be going about F2 and F3 the same way we had been going about F1 which is first we will be doing the chapter explanations followed by that we will be solving the Kaplan exam kit. So now we are starting with F3, the chapter 1 of F3, which is Introduction to Financial Reporting. So this is a more or less practical chapter. So we have so many sums to solve in this. But the starting few chapters are theoretical in nature. So we'll be first covering the theory parts, which is the first, second and third chapter. Okay. So we have almost done everything in this chapter in the F1, Business and Technology. So I won't be going into the detail of every single thing because we have covered that in the Business and Technology. Now let's see what the accounting consists of. So what is accounting? It's recording and summarizing, right? So when it comes to summarizing the accounts, there are two types. We have management accounts and we also have the financial statements what are the financial statements statement of cash flows statement of changes in equity statement of pnl which is profit and loss statement of financial position and notes if you can recall this was known as the balance sheet right and if you can recall this was the pnl account okay so the first thing the accounting system of a business records and summarizes the financial performance position of a business over at a certain point of time. This information is crucial to various stakeholders of the business who will analyze that information to make significant economic decisions. It is of vital importance that these stakeholders have good quality information to be able to make good quality decisions. So you know that the accounting statements, they are used by all the stakeholders. We have also studied this. So like a customer, employee, shareholder, everybody needs to have access to the financial statements so that they make some economic decisions based on uh, studying the financial statements. So in this chapter, we explore the nature of businesses and the stakeholders and identify what their information requirements are and how it fits into the process of financial reporting. Much of the content of this chapter is new. However, it is important that we need to um, kind of study about the financial reporting. So in case you had accountancy in your grade 11th and grade 12th, this subject is going to be very easy for you. Even if you did not have Still, it will be okay. Just try to understand it with me. The accounting system of a business records and summarizes the financial performance or position of a business over or at a certain period of time. So this is the same thing which we already saw. This just got repeated. This is the same para is written over here because it is related to the other chapters as well. Okay, now let's come to what is financial accounting and what is management accounting. So as you know, there are two types of accounting. One is the financial accounting and the other is the management accounting. Financial accounting is concerned with the production of financial statements for the external users. If you recall, we saw that the financial statements are like used for by the external users whereas the management accounts are made for the management or for the internal people. 
so financial accounting these are a report on the director stewardship of the funds entrusted to them by the shareholders so directors are the people who take care of the operations in the business right investors need to be able to choose which companies to invest in and compare their investments in order to facilitate comparison financial accounts are prepared using accepted accounting conventions and standards international accounting standards are and international financial reporting standards help to reduce the differences in the way that companies draw up their financial statements in different countries the financial statements are public documents and therefore they will not they will not reveal details about individual products profitability so you know why we will be requiring financial accounts even various stakeholders use them for example we read about the investors right so financial statements are something which is used by the external users now when we come to management accounting what was management accounting management required much more detailed and up to date information in order to control their business and plan for the future so financial statements is like a summary or the overview of what is happening in the business whereas management accounting is something which is more detailed in nature and it has up to date information to plan for the future management needs to be able to cost out products and production methods assess profitability and so on in order to facilitate this management accounts present information in any way which may be useful to the management for example by operating unit or product line so you know that financial statements have a particular format or something like that but in management accounting it's just as long as the management can understand and however they prefer you can make it in any way there is no such format here management accounting is an integral part of uh, just a second integral part of management activity concerned with identifying presenting and interpreting information used for formulating strategy planning and controlling activities decision making optimizing the use of resources so these are the things where management accounting is used where you formulate strategy where you plan and control activities decision making and optimizing the use of the resources now you come to the users of the financial statements who are the users of the financial statements so you already know who are the users there are various users you have investors customers suppliers management employees the public competitors government and the lenders you know how they all use the financial statements still let's quickly go about and see how they use the financial statements so the first person we have is the investor so why does an investor want to see the financial statements obviously to see if they want to invest in the company or not so investors and potential investors are interested in their potential profits and the security of their investment they want to know how secure their money will be if they invest in the company or if they have already invested they want to see if how the company is going and how their money is there in the company future profits may be estimated from the target entity's past performance when you invest in the company you look at the past performance and only then invest in the company right expecting that oh if this is how the company uh, had like earned profits in the previous quarter then this time also it will act in the same way that is how you see the past performance or the past financial statements and only then you invest so that's another way how the financial statements help the investors the security of their investment will be revealed by the financial strength and solvency of the entity as shown in the statement of financial position so the financial strength or solvency is always shown in the balance sheet which is the financial position the largest and the most sophisticated groups of investors are the institutional investors such as pension funds and unit trusts now we have employees employees and trade union representatives need to know if an employer can offer secure employment 
and possible pay rises. So employees want to see the financial statements and see that whether they'll be getting a pay raise or not. They will also have an information about division and profitability will also be useful if a part of the business is threatened with closure. Now we have lender. So before somebody gives a loan to a company, they want to see how the company is performing. Are they capable to fulfill or to pay back the loan in the future? Checking the credit worthiness of the company, right? So that is how the lenders also see. Lenders need to know if they will be repaid. This will depend on the solvency of the entity, which should be revealed by the statement of financial position. So whenever you talk about the strength of the company or the solvency, it is always shown on the balance sheet. Long term loans may also be backed by security given by the business over specific assets. The value of these assets will be indicated in the statement of financial positions. Now we have government. Government agencies need to know how the economy is performing in order to plan financial and industrial policies. The tax authorities also use the financial statements as a basis for assessing the amount of tax which is payable. So government also checks every um, company's financial statements because they want to see how the economy is growing. And the same thing with the tax authorities. They want to see the financial statements so that they can tell the companies how much tax is expected from them. Suppliers. Suppliers need to know if they will be paid. So what happens is that mostly in the companies, suppliers provide the goods on a credit basis. So they need some reassurance to know if the company will be able to pay them or not. So suppliers need to know if they will be paid. New suppliers may also require reassurance about the financial health of a business before agreeing to supply the goods. Now we have customers. Customers need to know that an entity can continue to supply them into the future. This is especially true if a customer is dependent on an entity for specialized supplies. So as a customer, naturally we want to know that will they keep providing us or will they be like shut down. Now you come to the public. The public may wish to assess the effect of the entity on the economy, on the environment local environment and local community companies may contribute to their local economy and community through providing employment and patronizing local suppliers some companies also run corporate responsibility programs through which they support the environment economy community so you know that obviously the public will also want to see the financial statements so that is how the various type kinds of stakeholders will be using the financial statements of a company. Now let's come to the next topic. Okay, before that, management and competitors would also use the financial statements of a business to make economic decisions. Management, however, would predominantly use management accounting information as their main source of financial information for decision making. Competitors may also access publicly available information to assess decision making in relation to their own business activities. Obviously, even the competitors will be seeing our financial uh, statements to see how we are performing and what our profit is and everything. Overall, users of financial statements need information which is relevant and reliable to help them assess management stewardship of the resources which they control and manage. Financial information enables users to hold managers to account for their decisions and enable users to make decisions about whether to invest in or provide other resources to the business. So how does the financial statement need to be? They need to be reliable and they need to be relevant. They should be relevant in nature and they should be reliable in nature. Coming to test your understanding one, which of the following users do you think require the most detailed financial information made available to them? Competitors, management, trade unions and investors. 
so if you need the most detailed in financial information up to date and detailed information that would be required by the management so the answer is b now we come to the types of business entity so this is something which we have already seen in the business and technology paper but let's just um skim through it so what is a sole trader it is the simplest form of business here the business is owned and operated by one individual so in a sole trader it is operated by one i'll change the color it is operated by one individual this is what is a sole trader and uh, with this form of entity there is no legal distinction between owner and the business so owner receives all the profits but has unlimited liability so since the owner has an unlimited liability that also means that if there are any losses they have to be paid by the owner from their own personal things the capital structure of a sole trader is also relatively simple there is a capital account which represents the financial interest of the owner in the business the capital account can be added to by the owner introducing additional capital into the business or by the business making profits with the sole trader is entitled to the capital account can be reduced by the sole trader making withdrawals during the year often referred to as drawings or by the business making losses so what do you see in a sole trader we have a capital account where you have the equity which is like the initial capital additional capital and you can subtract whenever you take the money out of the business that where you remove the money or where you withdraw the money that is known as drawings so that we have a capital account in the sole trader now we have the partnership similar to a sole trader the owners of a partnership receive all the profits and have unlimited liability for all the losses and debts of the business the key distinction between the sole trader and the partnership is that in the sole trader there is only one person who manages everything whereas in partnership there are two or more people the joint owners or partners are jointly and severally liable for the losses the business makes they are each fully liable in respect of all business liabilities now the capital structure of a partnership is similar to that of a sole trader each partner will have a financial interest in the business and this will be divided between a capital account and a current account so in sole trader in sole proprietorship we saw that there is only one account and that is the capital account all the transactions in a sole proprietorship is taken done is done only in the capital account whereas in partnership what happens is in partnership we have a capital account as well as the current account now let in the further chapters we will be going into the detail of what happens in a capital account what happens in a current account and so on so don't get confused and scared this chapter is just the basic theory part if you're not able to understand it right now even then it's okay because when you do the following chapters when you do the numericals and the practical parts and after doing that when you come back to this chapter you will find it very easy so don't force yourself or be hard on yourself to understand this right now just listen to me and try to understand it and as in when you do the other chapters you can come back to this video and then you'll understand it better so in partnership we have uh, two types of accounts a capital account and the current account the capital account is normally a fixed amount that will only change upon a partner joining or leaving the business the current account includes the share of profit and or loss that each partner is entitled to less any person drawings made by that partner so what happens in a capital account so only the additional capital bought by the person or people joining the company right only that time the transactions take place to the capital account when someone brings in capital or when someone leaves the company 
rest all other transactions everything else is done in the current account only is that clear so in the capital account you have only the additional capital uh, work and you have the um, like when a partner joins or when a partner leaves only then the transactions are put in the capital account the rest all the transactions are done in the current account now you come to limited liability companies so unlike the sole traders in partnerships limited liability companies are established as separate legal entities to the owners so we saw that in the sole proprietorship and partnership they are not legally separate it's the same but however when it comes to the partnership um sorry when it comes to the limited liability company so the company is legally separate from the owner so owner is a different entity and the company is a different entity according to the limited liability company which means the liability is not unlimited right because owner is separate and the business is separate and like sole traders in partnership limited liability company are established as separate legal entities to their owners this is achieved through the process of incorporation so what is incorporation by incorporation you make the company a separate legal identity the owners of a company the shareholders invest capital in the business in return for a shareholding that entitles them to a share of the residual assets of the business what is residual assets so when you are shutting down the business after shutting down the business the left out assets which we have they get a share of the assets when the business closes down or shuts down or closes its operation or winds up whatever a uh, little bit asset is left so they have a share in it that's how a share is described as so that is what the residual assets is the left out assets after winding up of the business what is left when company is wound up or liquidated the shareholders are not personally liable for the debts of the company and whilst they may lose their investment if the company becomes insolvent they will not have to pay the outstanding debts of the company if such a circumstance arises so as we have seen that um since the they are separate legal entities so the they are liable only to the extent of the capital they have done so they might lose their entire money but they might not have to pay something extra other than the capital which they have contributed likewise the company is not affected by the insolvency or death of individual shareholders limited liability companies are managed by a board of directors who are elected by the shareholders so who manages the company the board of directors manage the company who elects the board of directors the shareholders elect the board of directors who are the directors the manager they take care of the daily day to day operations of the company the capital structure of a limited liability company is more formalized than the that of a sole trader or partnership so shareholders cannot make withdrawals or drawings from the business in the way that a sole trader or partner is able to do instead they receive a return on their investment in the company referred to as a dividend which is paid from accumulated profits okay so uh, the shareholders once they have given the money they cannot withdraw and make drawings from it instead they get dividends dividends are paid on the accumulated profits okay operating as a sole trader partnership or company so first we have what is sole trader accounting conventions recognize the business as a separate entity from its owner however legally the business and personal affairs of a sole trader are not distinguished in any way the most important consequence is that is that this is that a sole trader has complete personal unlimited liability business debts which cannot be paid from business assets must be met from sale of personal assets such as a house or a car 
Sole trading organizations are normally small because they have to rely on the financial resources of the owner. The advantages of operating as a sole trader include the flexibility and the autonomy. You can introduce or withdraw the capital at any time. Partnership A partnership is not legally distinguished from its members. Personal assets of the partners may have to be used to pay the debts of the partnership business. What are the advantages? More resources may be available. So why do we have more resources? Because you have two or more people in the partnership. More resources may be available including capital, specialist knowledge, skills and ideas. Administrative expenses may be lower for a partnership than for the equivalent number of sole traders due to economies of scale. So the administrative costs are also less in the partnership due to economies of scale. Partners can substitute for each other. Partners can introduce or withdraw the capital at any time provided that all the partners agree. So if all the partners agree, you can withdraw or the capital or have some drawings. Now we have the comparison of uh, companies to sole traders and partnership. So now let's compare both of them on uh, one by one basis. Property holding. So the property of a limited liability company belongs to the company. A change in the ownership of shares in the company will have no effect on the ownership of the company's property. In a partnership, the firm's property belongs directly to the partners who can take it with them if they leave the partnership. So that is the difference. So once you're in a company, it's not your property, it's the company's property. But since it's not legally different in partnership or sole trader, the property is yours and if you're leaving, you can take it along. Now you have transferable uh, shares. Shares in a limited company can usually be transferred without the consent of the other shareholders. In the absence of agreement to the contrary, a new partner cannot be introduced into the firm without the consent of all the existing partners. Right? So that's how it is. So in a company, you can transfer the shares easily, but then in a partnership, you need the consent of everybody. Suing and being sued. So as a separate legal person, a limited company can sue and be sued in its own name. Judgments relating to companies do not affect the members personally because they are separate legal entities. Security for loans. A company has greater scope for raising loans and may secure them with floating charge. A floating charge is a mortgage over the constantly fluctuating assets of a company providing security for the lender of the money to the company. So floating charge, what is the um, floating charge? A floating charge is the extra charge when you give the mortgage. When you take a loan, you take a mortgage. You have to submit a mortgage, right? So that's the thing. So the mortgage is uh, a floating charge is a mortgage over the constantly fluctuating assets of a company providing security for the lender of the money to a company. It does not provide the company. It does not prevent the company dealing with the assets in the ordinary course of business. Such a charge is useful when a company has no non-current assets such as land but has very large and valuable inventories. Generally, the law does not permit partnerships or individuals to secure loans with a floating charge. So you can secure uh, loans with a floating charge only if you are a company. You cannot secure loans um, in a floating charge if you are a partnership, right? Now you come to taxation. So taxation, so in a company, the shareholders, I mean the people, the, it is a separate legal entity. So the tax is all, since they're legally separated, it is taxed separately from the shareholders. Whereas partners and sole traders are personally liable for the income tax on the profits made by their business. Now let's come to what are the disadvantages of incorporation. So what is incorporation? Incorporation is when the company and the owner, they are two separate legal entities. That is what is known as incorporation. So what are the disadvantages of being a limited company? 
arise partici- principally from the restrictions imposed by relevant company law so when being formed companies have to register and file formal constitution documents with a registrar the registration fees and legal costs have to be paid so if you want to incorporate so if you want to like legally go into that situation then you need to uh, pay the registration fees and the legal costs also have to be paid in addition it is normally a requirement for a company to produce annual financial statements that must be submitted to the registrar it is also usually a requirement for those financial statements to be audited the costs associated with this can be high partnership and sole traders are not subject to this requirement okay so you need to submit the annual financial statements to the um, registrar so if you are incorporated so this is also required mostly everywhere so that is also again expensive a registered company's accounts and certain other documents are open to public inspection the accounts of sole traders and partnerships are not open to the public inspection limited companies are subject to strict rules in connection with the introduction and withdrawal of the capital and profits members of a company may not take part in its management unless they are also directors whereas all partners are entitled to take a share in the management unless partnership agreement provides otherwise so these are some of the very um, important disadvantages which we can face when you incorporate so i hope that's easy now we come to the next uh, chapter the next topic okay so um i'll just stop this video right here because i feel like it's too heavy for the first time i know that it is kind of boring and uh, very lengthy but then this is just the starting chapter where you have been given an overview about everything which we will be studying don't worry the following videos will not be boring and the following chapters will be practical and you know interesting in nature so i'm just stopping it here because i want you to do the next topic with a fresh mind so in the part 2 we will be covering the rest of the chapter right so we'll be starting with the framework and uh, we will be completing the entire chapter in the part 2 so the link of the part 2 will be given in the description box below and i hope that you understood the chapter so far and in case you want to do f1 or any other then the playlist of everything is also given in the description box below thank you